Welcome to Unity. Today, we'll introduce you to the fantastic new light mapper, powered by Beast, that's coming with Unity 3. This incredibly powerful tool quickly transforms dull, flat scenes like this into beautifully lit environments like this. The Beast light mapper adds so much atmosphere and it's so easy to use. Let's take a closer look. To show you how it works, we have a simple Cornell box with no active lighting. We'll use this scene to run through the setup and execution of baking light maps. You'll also see how to modify the light maps with post-processing. Let's take a look at the import settings for this model. You can see that there is a new option here, the Generate Light Map UVs checkbox. Enabling this option will automatically generate a second UV channel to be used with your light maps. Before we perform the bake, we need to tell Unity which object should have the light map applied. We do this by enabling the static checkbox on any game object we want to be baked. We'll also need a source of light. We could use any normal Unity light in our light map, but we also can use an object with an emissive shader to make glowing objects, or in this case, a skylight. Notice that in the object's material, we can fine tune the emissive property to make it behave however we want to. Now with everything set up, we go to Tools, Light Mapping to bring up the Light Map Editor, powered by Beast. There are a number of settings to play with, but for now we'll just press Bake and see what happens. We're going to let this bake happen in real time, so you can see just how fast it really is. Baking is also an asynchronous operation, so you can continue to build and test your game while the bake is happening in the background. This detail fully embodies the Unity philosophy of helping you make the best games you can as quickly as possible. There, the result of our first bake. We can look around at the finer details. Bouncing of light, color bleeding from the different walls, some really nice soft shadows. Our Cornell box looks so much better now. And remember, this scene doesn't even contain any lights. This result was achieved by using an emissive shader on a mesh. And if we look here, we can see this bake completed in only 22 seconds. Now we'd like to show you how easy it is to change some options and rebake. Still in our Cornell box scene, maybe we decide we want the green wall to be emissive as well. We can get the material by clicking through the inspector, change the shader to emissive, and bake again. This bake took 41 seconds, and we have drastically different lighting in the scene. In fact, maybe we think this green is a little too blown out for our game. It's not a problem. We can change this however we want. By viewing the Maps tab of the Beast interface, we can access the textures that are generated for our light maps. These are stored in EXR format and can be edited just like any other texture. Double-clicking the texture will open it up in our image editor of choice, in this case, Photoshop. Here, we can do anything we want to our light map, draw on it, blur it, or modify the overall lighting values. We can just save and switch back over to Unity, and our changes are immediately applied, just as you'd expect. Look how much the mood inside our Cornell box has changed, and all from some simple edits to our Beast-generated light maps. So cool. We've shown off some indoor scene examples, so now let's look at some outdoor lighting. Specifically for outdoor scenes, you can use the skylight settings to get that distinct look of the outside world. What we have here is a simple outdoor scene with some nice skyscrapers and a standard directional light casting hard shadows. As you can see, we've set up our scene by marking all of our light mapped objects as static. This scene is ready to bake. But first, let's look at another editor feature for the light mapper, Show Resolution. By enabling this view mode, we can see a visual representation of the light map's resolution before we bake it. What you're seeing here is a representation of texels per world unit. This defines the overall crispness of the light map regardless of how large your scenes are. When you've found a resolution you like, you can continue to build up the environment and the new areas will look just as nice as the old ones when light mapped. We'll use a resolution of 200 texels per world unit. And now we bake. One minute later, our scene is light mapped. This is more of a preview bake to let us see a result of our first settings. 
we can see the shadows are a little bit low resolution and there isn't quite as much depth as we want to achieve. So let's tweak it a little bit and then bake it again. The ambient occlusion slider is what we'll tweak to give us a stronger sense of depth. Let's boost it all the way up to one, just to see what happens. We'll also increase the number of rays used in the final bake. This gives us higher quality with a slightly longer baking time. Finally, we'll increase the overall light map resolution to 800 texels per world unit, up from 200. Baking with all the new settings and increased resolution gives us a brand new look for the scene after about nine minutes. The result is completely fantastic. The shadows are higher resolution, the ambient occlusion can be seen in the corners, and the overall depth is just much stronger. And if you look closely, you'll see a tiny bit of color bleeding from the walls of the buildings. Complex scenes like this make special use of Unity's dual light map approach. This scene is blending between light maps and real-time lights based on distance. If we disable the light maps, we can see some real-time shadows in the foreground. Everything out in the distance is going to be lit with light maps. By adjusting the shadow distance slider, I can change the position where blending occurs. And by re-enabling light maps, I can see the blend point between the light map shadows and the real-time shadows. The blending is practically invisible, so you can optimize this setting for your game to achieve the best performance with the highest quality visuals. There's not much left to do now except show you a great scene light mapped by Beast. Enjoy. Careful now, Private. These training boxes are serious business. Make sure you get into cover before you start shooting. We hope you've enjoyed the sneak peek into the Beast Light Mapper, coming this summer as part of Unity 3.